بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم السلام علیکم سی ایس پرو یوزرس ٹیوٹوریل ٹرو کریٹ پی ایف ایف فائل اینڈ مینیو دس از دا سیکنڈ اینڈ لاسٹ ٹیوٹوریل ان اے سیریز آف ٹیوٹوریل ڈیمونسٹریٹنگ ہاؤ ٹو کریٹ اے مینیو اپلیکیشن ان دس ٹیوٹوریل وی ول ڈو دا فالوئنگ ایکٹیویٹیز ہاؤ ٹو ورک ود آؤٹ ایس ٹی ایم ایل ڈائلاگ انڈرسٹینڈ دا کانسیپٹ آف ایکسیپٹ فنکشن کریٹ مینیو کریٹ another pff file to call a data entry application we can design menu with or without using html dialogs in this tutorial we will work without using html dialogs to create menu we will learn how to use html dialogs in our coming tutorials at the end you will see the menu layout look like this before start working first uncheck the use html dialogs open the menu application by double clicking select option from the menu and click on application properties click on advanced features in the left side pane and uncheck the use html dialogs and press okay now use html dialogs option is disabled please note this change will only take place in the menu application in the login application use html dialogs will remain checked If you want to uncheck in the login application then do the same steps in the login application to save time i have already done logic to create a menu let's examine the logic first select the menu application underscore level and then click on the logic icon from the toolbar we have already discussed set language load setting and on change global function so we will examine the rest of the syntax The two number function converts a string expression into a number. We are using two number functions here because we have set data type as numeric in the data dictionary. And on the other hand, the attribute values are saved as a string. First, the load setting function will be triggered and return a string containing the value associated with the attribute. After that, two number function will run and convert the string value into numeric. Lastly, the numeric value will be assigned to the menu app underscore login ID and you can see this value on your form. The same procedure will run on the next two lines. At the end, your form look like this. The set attribute statement switches the values of various field properties. Field properties can be set statically via the field properties direct box. or dynamically at runtime via the set attributes command we are doing set the attributes dynamically at runtime the reason we want to protect it is because we don't want any change in the value of the key variables during the data entry or copy these fields are protected through dynamically so the cursor will move on to the menu app underscore role click on the menu app underscore role give the function name view menu below the preprog the preprog statement declares that the function following it is executed at the beginning level click on the menu application underscore ff to view the user defined function view menu user defined functions are coded in the declaration portion prog global first declare a numeric variable cell underscore option in the global section let's review the code in the view menu function First, we will check through load setting function that you are logging as a supervisor or a enumerator. If the code is one in the attribute login underscore role, then if condition will run, otherwise the else part of the code will run. User settings function shows that you are logging as a supervisor. So the if condition will be run. On the second line, we are using except function. Let's explore the except function. The except function has two parts. heading and number of choices each choice has its own index number for example if we select an option from the supervisor menu receive listing data from the enumerator then then the index number will be 6 and this index number will be stored in the dummy variable cell underscore option see another example if we select this empty space then the index number will be 9 why because this empty space is the part of the choice 
and this index number will be stored in the dummy variable cell underscore option. In the second line, we have two string expression for the heading. First, the load setting function will be triggered and return a string containing the value associated with the at attribute. After that, the strip function removes trailing blanks from the string expression. And lastly, the concate function concatenates the value of two or more string expressions. After concatenate, the result will be look like this. We have discussed the first part in the accept function and now let's see the choices in the second part. Each choice is provided as a string expression. We will use double quotes to write a string expression and after each string expression, enter a comma to separate them. At the end, put a small bracket with semicolon. The menu for the supervisor is done. We will do the same way for the enumerator menu. After this, we will use index number with if statement to perform the activity. The value 0 is returned if the escape key is pressed and none of the choice is selected. Then this if statement will run and you will get an error message. If the value greater than 0 is returned, then this if statement will be run because we are logging as a supervisor. If the supervisor selects the option assign EA, then value 2 will return and then this block of code will run. Similarly, if supervisor select the option receive listing data from the enumerator, then the value 6 will return and then this block of code will run. If we select options against these index numbers 1, 4, 5, 9, 10, 14, 15 and 19, then we will get an error message because we have empty spaces or main headings for this index number. After the error message, we will move back on menu app underscore login id item. We will do the same thing with enumerators menu. Lastly, let's see another example for the PFF object. For this activity, we have two more folders in the app underscore login folder. 107 underscore listing and 108 underscore data. I have a listing application in the 107 underscore listing folder to access through PFF from the enumerator menu. Let's go through the syntax. When enumerator select the option start listing exercise, then the index number three will be triggered. Through this index number, we are calling a function start listing. In the start listing function, we have only one change. We are using data name in input data. When we are calling menu application, then data type is none because we are not going to save any data in the data file. Let's review this line of code. We are using concate function to concatenate the string expression. In the concate function, we have three string expressions. The path where we want to save data file, file name and extension. Save the menu application. Before test the application, view the data folder. Currently, data folder is empty. Open and run the login application. Get login information. From the menu screen, select Start Listing. The listing form will be pop up. You start entering your data. When you have finished the data entry, press Ctrl J to view the case tree. You can see your entered ID in the case tree. Now close your data entry window and navigate to the folder 108 underscore data containing your data file. Open your data file in the data viewer by double clicking it. The entered data can then be viewed. See the CS Pro helps for more information on how to use the accept function, concate function, error message function, two number function, and set attribute statement. You can download login application from the description section. Keep on learning and goodbye.